Today I'm going to show you eight key steps to getting the best internet service in your RV. And at the end of the video, I'm going to talk about why we went with a company that you've probably never heard of. Let's go. Okay, so the first thing before you even start looking at companies or equipment, or even watching YouTube videos is to start mapping out where you're gonna be traveling. Now that may be more difficult for some of us who kind of just travel where the wind takes us, but I think for the most part, we have a good idea of where we're going to be traveling. And while you're plotting out your locations, it's good to take note if you're gonna be camping in campgrounds with a lot of tree coverage or obstructions to the sky like tall buildings or mountain ranges, as well as areas known for bad weather. We'll talk about this a little bit later on in the video, but for now, know where you're going, know the environments that you're going to be in, hold on to that information because we're gonna use that in the next step. Start looking at coverage maps, compare those to where you're going to be camping to see who has the best service in those areas. As far as coverage, you have cellular and you have satellite, both have pros and cons. Let's start with cellular. There's two main companies, Verizon and T-Mobile. Now there are other companies, but those are the two most popular internet providers. Now, as you're looking at coverage maps, remember just because an area has coverage doesn't mean it has great coverage. The RV community is fantastic. Don't be afraid to go online and ask questions about certain service providers at the campgrounds you're gonna be visiting. The other option is Starlink Satellite. Now you can find coverage maps for Starlink, but this is where physical obstructions are gonna come into play. Starlink works on line of sight, meaning your antenna is gonna to need to have a line of sight to the sky. If you're camping in wooded areas with a lot of tree coverage and valleys, mountains may obstruct your line of sight. Additionally, regions with heavy rain rain, snowfall, or atmospheric conditions in urban areas, tall buildings may also obstruct your line of sight. Remember that you need direct line of sight to the satellites, not just the sky. And if you don't have that, Starlink may not be your best option. Now, cellular transmission can be affected by weather as well, but cellular works off of frequency bands, so it's not as affected as it is with line of sight. Now, there are other factors that'll come into play to make our final decision, but for now, you can probably start narrowing it down. Because if you're camping in an area without cell service, satellite's gonna be your only option. And if you're camping a lot in wooded areas, Starlink's not gonna work for you. Now, if the conditions and environment of where you're camping will work with both cellular and satellite, there's no need to pick one right now. So let's move to the next step. Now, with either service you go with, you're going to have to initially set up a router inside your RV but with cellular service, there's no other additional equipment. And yes, you can run external antennas on cellular routers, but that's usually a once and done process. With Starlink, you have an antenna or a dish that needs to be mounted outside of the RV. Permanently mounting a Starlink antenna is not recommended because if you pull into a campground that doesn't have line of sight, you're gonna have to move it. With Starlink, some people have created flagpole mounts while others will just put the antenna on the ground at each campground they visit. Now that may not be a problem for some people, but I think that there's other people who don't wanna be involved with that setup and teardown procedure at every single campground, and that's something you're gonna to need to decide on. I also wanna to quickly touch on the idea of the quality of the equipment. A little research online will tell you if you're getting a quality piece of equipment that will suit your needs for internet in your RV. And the last thing to consider with equipment is ownership. Are you buying the equipment or are you essentially leasing it? If that's the case, once you're done with that service provider, you're probably going to have to return that equipment. Determine the speed requirements based on your internet usage. Take a look at download and upload speeds and make sure that the provider you're looking at meets those requirements. You'll also wanna to check to see if that internet provider throttles their service, which essentially means they slow down the speeds during peak times. It's important to research the reliability of the provider's network so that you know you're going to have service as well. You'll also wanna to check to see if that provider has data cap limits because if you exceed your data, they may charge you an additional fee. And even if they don't have an unlimited plan, that's okay. Just make sure that the data they provide you is going to be enough. It's important to understand pricing and contract terms for each provider as well. You'll want to compare pricing on not just the service, but also the equipment. If you do have a contract with a specific service provider, this is something to consider, especially if you're a part-time RVer, because you're not going to be able to cancel your service during the months that you're not camping. So if you're enjoying or learning something from the video, please let us know by liking, subscribing, and commenting below. As always, I appreciate your support and we can continue making free content for you because of our sponsors like RV Snap Pads. In fact, RV Snap Pads are now available for travel trailers, but these are a little bit different. Introducing RV Snap Jacks. Just like the Snap Pads you've probably seen for auto leveling systems, 
snap jacks are designed for the scissor stabilizer jacks you'll find on most travel trailers. RV snap jacks have up to 274% more surface area than a scissor jack foot, and with more ground contact, it comes much more stability. The pads are made from 100% recycled tire rubber, which not only conforms to rocky and uneven surfaces better than a metal plate, they also provide better grip and less sinkage into soft ground. They protect your RV's landing gear from wear and tear, plus they also protect your driveway or campsite from scraping and rust stains. Installation is simple. Lower your scissor jacks, remove the two bolts and the scissor jack foot, line up the new replacement foot, install the new bolts, and you're done. There's a lot of different sizes and options available. I'll put a link down below in the video description that'll take you to their website and automatically take 10% off of your order. Research the reputation of the internet service provider's customer support. Look for reviews from existing customers on their feedback, which will also include response time and issue resolution. And this last step is something that I don't think a lot of people are looking at when considering an internet service provider. What security procedures does the internet service provider you're looking at have in place to protect your information. Some of the factors you want to look at are encryption, firewalls, and data breaches. Now, it's okay to use a third party, as long as that third party is getting their SIM cards directly from Verizon or T-Mobile, and they're not purchasing them through a broker. Okay, so before we chose an internet provider for the RV, I spoke with my friend Joshua from the channel RV Gear and Far. I know he uses Starlink and he travels across the country. However, after speaking with him a little bit, many of our campsites have a lot of tree coverage. I knew Starlink just wasn't gonna work for us. So my friends Todd and Sheila from the channel Switch It Up recommended a company called Internet On The Go. Now I wanna be very transparent with you guys. They did not sponsor this video. They did not pay us to create this video and we paid full price for our equipment. Internet on the go uses Verizon and T-Mobile for cellular service. We have Verizon coverage in the majority of the campgrounds that we go to. Internet on the go also uses Peplink equipment, which is great equipment. We went with the Max BR1 Pro 5G router. I don't think I butchered that too much, but it is considered one of the best 5G routers on the market right now. We bought the equipment, so we own it. Now you don't have to buy equipment from Internet on the go if you already have equipment, if it's compatible with Verizon or T-Mobile, they'll send you the SIM cards and you can use your existing equipment. However, one of the reasons that I bought the equipment from them is because they make it very simple. You tell them what you need, they send it out to you. Once you get it, you give them a call, they activate it, set up your password, and you're done. If you want simple, guys, this is simple. As far as internet speed, I've done a few speed tests at some different campgrounds that we've been at, and they've all been consistent with the claims that Verizon makes. I think the lowest speed that I've seen was 25 megabits down. Another nice thing about internet on the go is you do not have a contract, you just pay on a monthly basis. They haven't changed their service pricing in years, even during the pandemic. They get their SIM cards directly through Verizon or T-Mobile, and they don't throttle their speeds. I'll put a link to Internet on the Go's webpage down below if you want to reach out to them. I'm sure they'll be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Also, we just started a free newsletter. I'll put a link to that on the screen in just a second. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you soon.